morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are tuning in from. Let me know that you can hear and see me okay. I see there are people here waiting and watching. Welcome. Great to have you here. Um, and you know, anytime you have a question or you want to, uh, you know, post a comment, do let us know. We are watching the chat box as we are here as well. All right. I'm super excited about this episode. This is episode 25. So we are, I've had 25 guests on here, um, which I'm, I'm super grateful for and super, super, super thankful for. Um, all right. So if you love to sing musical theater songs, or even if you just enjoy watching live vocal performances, and you're the type of person who loves to know all the behind the scene details of what, what it's really like behind the curtains, what it's really like to have a career under the big lights, then you will definitely love this month's guest expert. My guest today is Melanie Granland. She's a singer, actor, voiceover artist, and spent four years playing the role of Gigi Van Tran in the Dutch production of the award-winning musical Miss Saigon. In, in today's session, Melanie will be sharing the behind the scenes stories about her experiences, her tips on auditioning for major roles, and how she was able to keep her voice in top condition night after night. Now, if this is your first time here, my name is Crystal Diaz. I'm a co-founder of the Online Vocal Academy, where we help people who love to sing but feel insecure about their voices become confident and skilled singers by getting them hooked on practicing. So we've created a system where you can become a better singer in less than 30 days just by attending our monthly live coaching classes and following our weekly singing practices, our weekly singing challenges. And our students actually look forward to practicing their singing week after week and sharing their progress with us. So if you want to know more about our program and you want to learn the, our three top secrets for finding your true voice for singing, then sign up to watch our free training at three singing secrets.com. All right. My guest is Melanie Granland. She's a singer, actor, voiceover artist, and former cast member in the Dutch production of the award-winning musical Miss Saigon. Out of 3,000 auditions, Melanie and just three other singers were chosen and relocated to the Netherlands to play leading roles in Miss Saigon. Here to share the lessons she's learned from her career on the big stage, please welcome Melanie Granland. Hello. Hi. Hi, everyone. Thank you. Great to so see you here. Me. Oh, thank you for, for doing this. Um, you know, it's uh, quite an interesting story how we know each other. Right? Like, yes. <laughs> this is literally the first time that we've actually had a full conversation. Uh, but one of your sisters is actually in our program. Your, yeah. your sister. How many siblings do you have? I'm assuming you have more than one. There's three of us. <laughs> There's three of us. My sister is the eldest. And then we've got a brother. His name is Dennis is in the middle. And I'm the youngest. I see. And is Dennis in music? In, oh, yeah. music? He's an entire he's family. In Hong Kong. Yeah, the entire family. Yeah. Oh, he's a musician here. What does yes. he play? He's a he plays a piano. He plays a violin. He plays a trumpet. And he has he, ha he has a musical director for some shows in Hong Kong. Oh, amazing. I, I, I would inter I'd love to interview your brother next time. <laughs> Just go through your family. <laughs> no, I, I have to bring this up. I, I understand that aside from singing, you are a voiceover artist and you actually can speak many different languages. Uh, can you share with us what they are? Uh, I speak five languages. Well, uh, yeah, English, uh, of course, and then Cantonese. I don't read, but I speak it. And then um, Tagalog. Dutch and French. My amazing. And you're and do you practice that regularly or is just something that you just had? I mean, I feel like with something like languages, um, you have to have very good memory, but you also have to have very good listening skills, right? To be able to hear all the, the dialects and the accents. And I understand you actually do a lot of imitation for dialects as well for what you do. Um, how did you learn all of those languages? And was that in a short period of time or was it just something that you were just creatively born with? Well, um, I was born speaking three languages, probably, because um, <laughs> living in Hong Kong, um, I, sp I spoke English, and then my parents are Filipino, so they spoke Tagalog to us. I went to school in Hong Kong, so all my classmates were Chinese, so I had no choice but to speak Cantonese. Then I, I got accepted in Miss Saigon in Holland, so that's why I had to speak Dutch. I also learned French also in, um, in high school, and then living in Europe, everybody speaks French too, so it helped. Yeah, but you're mm -hmm. right. If you don't speak it all the time, you tend to forget it. But thanks to Facebook, 
I get to learn, <laughs> practice it all the, most <laughs> of the time. And I go to Chinatown to speak Cantonese. So <laughs> There you go. So you have you have avenues for you to practice. So you were giving us a little bit of a background already about yourself, but I'd love to know you 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 grew up in a musical family and who what were your biggest who were your biggest musical influences? Can you give us a little slice of what growing up in a musical family was like for you? Well, my dad's a trumpet player, and uh, I we always attended. We when we were young, my mom would always bring us to where he worked, and then we'd go home afterwards. So we were really influenced by music at a young age. And then my my parents always for, forced the three of us to learn musical instruments. Like my sister plays the piano and my brother plays a violin. Is a, They're all perfect. I'm just lazy. So I never really <laughs> finished the piano. I hate practicing every day, but I loved singing a lot. And so um, I love listening to Barbara Streisand. She, oh, me too. Uh, she's just got a great voice. And I love the way how she interprets song. And I didn't know she. I didn't know at the young age she was a musical actress also, but I just love her song. I love her, just love her. And um, I grew up also listening to Whitney Houston. I try to belt like her, but I'll never sound like her for sure. But <laughs> you but, sound like you. That's what yeah, we need. The world needs exactly. you. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I gotta learn. I had to learn that way. I cannot sound like her at all for anybody. <laughs> Exactly. Absolutely. Would you say that singing was something that came naturally to you or did you feel you really had to learn um, how to do it well? Um, I would say both. I would say like I, I knew I liked singing and I could sing all the time. And but I knew I know that I had some breaking points in my in my vocals. Like I knew, OK, I needed to I want to master that. I said if this if this singer can like go from chest to mix to head so well, I want to do that because sometimes I crack all the time. So I wanted to work on that. So yes, I, that's what I wanted to work on. So you were, and then did you have a uh, training? I understand that you also went to, to school for actual vocals or was it for something else? Well, back in the Philippines. And then I, I took lessons at Ryan Kayab Yub studio. He was like a famous a name over there and they had really good vocal teachers there. And um, I started actually musical theater there. And I started, um, I was studying, uh, I, I did where I traveled to Malaysia, Japan for doing musicals. Then um, when I went to Holland, yeah, we were, we had strict vocal training and dancing training. And oh, that's yeah. where I really learned to, uh, to learn how to belt the right way and not Amazing. through from your throat, yeah. Yeah, I definitely want to get into that in a, in, a, in a minute. And I wanted to know, but first, in terms of getting into the profession of singing, just take us a little bit back here. Was did, You always grew up, you grew, grew up singing. You knew that you loved singing. But did you know that this is what I want to do professionally? Because I think there's a lot of us that love singing, right? But then there's, there's, there's not everybody will choose, like actively choose that path. Would you say you consciously chose that path? I'm going to be a professional singer. I'm going to be on stage and performing in musical theater productions. Or was it just kind of almost happenstance? You were just doing what you loved and then opportunities came. What would you say that was like for you? Well, back when I was young, I had no idea what musical theater was. But I had a classmate who owned a recording studio. So she oh. always <laughs> wanted someone to come and sing and do projects. So I did commercials. Uh, I did, um, yeah, commercial jingles and the voiceovers, and I did like children's songs, children Christmas songs, and then that's all I knew. I didn't know musical theater, and then I did. Um, I joined a Hong Kong children's choir, and then um, I joined singing contests from school, and I winning it was a, helped me boost my confidence of that this is what I want to do like, when I was winning co competition in school, and um, then I saw Leia Salonga that she did, I saw an article of her doing Miss Saigon. I said, I think I want to do that. I, I saw like, I mean, the first Asian woman uh, per, um, role to do a role in Broadway and West End. I, I said, I want to do that. And I bought the, the album and I said, I like the songs. And I tried to sing the songs. I, I think I could do this. So you know? that's fascinating. So, so it sounds like then you were just following what you were passionate about and then there were certain opportunities. Of course, you had a friend who had a recording studio, yeah. so you were singing. So that also just one thing led to another, one step after another, and then opportunities started to come. And but one of the things, though, I think that is when we start to follow the things that we are passionate about, and we are lit up by that, and we start to allow ourselves to follow that. I think some of us don't do that. 
right? Mm -hmm. Some of us will will choose a maybe a more practical route or whatever. But <laughs> even if we start to just follow our passion, you never know what opportunities might come down the line. And yes. I think one of the things is what I'm hearing here is that it's opening your eye. It opened your eyes to all the different opportunities. Then you started watching musical and you saw Lea Salonga and one thing led to another. So tell us about that. I mean, at what point from when you first saw Lea Salonga as a uh, lead role in Miss Saigon to auditioning, how long was that period of time or how intentional were you? Do, would you say you almost manifested that experience for yourself? Yes, yes. I just like, I thought I could do it. I was very shy. I was very timid and I had to push myself to do something different and to get out, get out of my shell and like, do it. Cause I get nervous all the time. Like right now I'm nervous. Still? <laughs> yeah. I know people say that to me all the time and I'm like, yeah, still, <laughs> but I, yeah. I, and then I react the same way to other people. You get nervous. I'm like, wait a minute. I get nervous too. I get it. Now. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> but then you have to force yourself to do it. Like I always told myself, like, if you want to do it, you just have to go for it. Whether you Absolutely. get it or not, at least you tried it. Absolutely. That's the thing. And so how long was that period of time when you first saw Leia Salonga to when you heard about the audition? Was it like a span of a, a year, a couple months? How long was that I would gap? say two years. So this was like a goal then, like yeah. a legitimate, this is where I want. You see Leia Salonga, I hear that, I hear the songs, I want to, I want to see myself on there. So the opportunity comes to audition, for you to audition. I guess it was through your school and things like that, yeah. or through the academy you were with. Yeah. And what was that feeling like for you when you first heard of that audition? Did you almost feel like this was meant for you? Yes. And the first audition for uh, Miss Saigon was uh, the German production. Wow. Oh. So it was advertised. <laughs> it was advertised. So, of course, I saw all my theater friends were going to audition. They said, you should go. You should go. I said, yeah, I'll go. And then so I went and uh, I didn't get that one. So I didn't pass that one because I, I didn't prepare properly. Oh, I, I, I didn't even know about this. I'd love to dig into that. So because I think people, people, uh, you know, try things and they try and then they maybe they don't, it doesn't turn out the way they want to, but then they don't try again. Yes. So I'd love to know what was that? What, what, in what way did you, did you make it different the next time around? So, so the German production came, you auditioned, didn't get the role because you felt like you weren't prepared enough. So what was the gap between that and then the Dutch production? Oh, that was fast because I realized what I did was wrong. Like, cause I, uh, I was like, I did the German aud audition. I didn't study the whole, what the musical is about. And here I was, like, I went there. Okay, I wore a sundress, like, not knowing what to. I didn't know. Like, I, I wasn't being myself. I think it's so important to be yourself and to know this and to learn and to study the song that you're going to sing on your first audition. Because that's what song, was that? Yeah, that's your, like, that's your only one opportunity for, to impress right. this, these people there in the um no other chances. One chance and that's it. And I just sang and sang. I didn't even know what I was singing. I sang movie in my mind, actually, that first audition, German. And I didn't study the role of Kim. I didn't study the role of Gigi. And here I'm sing wearing a sundress, singing that song that has nothing to do with sundress, that song. So, and then they looked at me like, I said, okay. I felt, I was looking at their faces. Like, first of all, you look at their faces, you, you have to you're not really telling the story. You're looking at their faces. And so I knew like, okay, I don't think I got this one. <laughs> so I finished the whole song. I sang it. And then, but I just felt like, okay, I just knew it wasn't because I wasn't comfortable already. I think that's the thing, right? If you're, if you're, if you're auditioning, would you say that would be one of your, your tips in terms of auditioning is study the preparation obviously is key, but when you are there, right, you, you have to be, you have to prepare so that you are comfortable yes. so that you know what you're doing so that you can be in that moment. Right. And, and that and that energy, I think is really, I mean, you think about it, they're going through so many auditions. Yeah. Right. It's so at that point, it's, I mean, I'm, I'm sure everybody was, was a great singer, but it's, what is that key thing? What is that feeling that they're, that they're getting from you as an, well, as a, while you're auditioning. Right. And so I think that energy is so important to, and that's where the preparation comes in, right? Preparation, then yeah. you can be in that moment and be yourself and be fully immersed in that experience. That's what, uh, would you say that that's, that's pretty accurate or what would anything you would like to, to any tips you want to give to people who maybe have, who have auditioned and haven't gone successfully? Um, what, what are some of the insights that you had? First of all, these people, like the judges, like the producers, they're behind there. They already have 
something in their head, like how what they're looking for. So they have this puzzle that they're trying to figure out. Like they want to make this, oh, this is a character. I'm looking this cat, this the the face, the per, the voice, her her body, how how she moves and all that. They have that specific look in what they and sometimes they also have um casted someone already in a different in the country. So they want to make sure they blend. So that's what they're looking for. It's not looking, they're not looking anymore like other they it's just is that and that and not they this is they know exactly what they want. Mm -hmm. So they they just need to build fix that puzzle. And, and so how and so how as a as a person auditioning, if you know that coming in, you know, what kind of what thoughts should these people have moving into that to help them to not get let that get a it affect them their mindset when they're when they're auditioning because you, you said you only got that one song yes so how did you prepare differently the second time around that really made that difference so Even yeah knowing the, that mm -hmm. so the second time when the the dutch production came and it's also Mac, camera macintosh she came to with the original producers so um i said okay this time i wore jeans just be myself and i sang on my own from les miserables and i studied the song really well i like i prepared like I put myself as Eponine and put myself past experience that made me feel like, listen to the song. What does it really mean? Like, you can't be all cheer cheerful and singing on my own. You got to feel it. Know the character. What does the character, what the character has been through. Like, know the story. It's so, so important. And then they, it comes out from your voice. And so when you're up there on stage, it's just don't think of anything else but Think of eponine. Think of experience. Why would you feel sad? Maybe you don't know who eponine is, but they say yeah, you felt. Just come from your own personal experience, like you you love someone, but it never worked out. How do you feel? So you have to put yourself in that situation. That's fascinating. And and did you actually you made that made those conscious choices prior to yes. the audition? Yeah. And so how many times? Did you practice that song prior to this audition? Would you say roughly? <laughs> a lot. Like I would say, I would, I would never audition for something if I never practiced a song because it it shows in your voice. So you really need to know your the song really well. So you don't have to think about, oh, is that part of the song? I can't do that. I need to make sure I do that, make that part. I don't belt, I don't break in that part. You shouldn't be thinking of those anymore. You have to think about the story because you have you're the only one they need to you need to convince them that you know what you're singing and i think that's more important than your voice you have to tell the story and yeah it's i think i a year i would say i learned it on my own a year and i kept singing it every day just sing it every day until your your voice is used to it amazing and i think you put that you paint that picture so beautifully it's that the repetition and that's why practice is so important right and repetition and having an intention knowing what you're trying to get for that uh for that practice session what you're trying to achieve and getting that into your system and we talk about this a lot in the program which is just muscle memory in yes. in, in a sense right so that you're constantly doing that going through that going through the process so that by the time you are in front of the judges or the the, the producers right you don't have you don't have to think about where do I belt? Where do I do this? Where do I? Because it's already in your body. So that's how you are able to be in the moment, telling that incredible story, channeling that character through your voice. Would you? That's I, that's oh, kind yeah, of the picture 100%, that you painted. Hundred percent. Yeah, hundred percent. Amazing. And so when you go in there, I'm just curious. It, it, are you seeing all the other people there as well who are coming for the audition? Um, no. Usually, like, call your name, Melanie. Go in, and then you go in there. You see all twelve people like looking at you. Without a smile, <gasps> nothing. Is that what was that? And how do you get you need to you nerve get nerve. Nerve. I know how do you how do you control your mind there? How do you how do you know like getting into that? Because you could do a lot of preparation. I have students that do that too. They prepare, prepare, but the minute they're on stage or they see the faces or they are in the audition, and it's that mind. Like, what do you tell yourself to is there one thing that you do, like one tip that you do that just steadies yourself and gets you grounded again? Yes. Um, first of all, before I know I'm I'm like five minutes, 10 minutes before I know I'm next, I don't talk to anybody. I just do breathing exercise and just close my eyes and just put good thoughts in yourself. Like, 
don't don't be chit chatting with somebody else because that's gonna distract you. <laughs> then when you're there, right, right, and go. I was just, I would just remember I was just sh shaking all the time, uh, and every time I hold a mic, I, I like that. <laughs> but good thing I'm not holding a mic because you belt it out because there's no mic there, and you're like far from there, and you need to make sure your voice reaches them. And so I would just deep breath and like, and then when I'm ready, I go to the pianist and say, "Yes, I'm ready." Yeah, and they, they just the will not start until he looks at you and say, "You're ready." And then you see faces there in front of you, just ignore it. I always look behind the judge, the, the judges. <laughs> I That's don't look amazing. <laughs> Oh, thank you so much for sharing that. I think you took you took us into that moment. I almost can hear that silence when, you, oh, yeah. when you're just standing there. And sometimes and they look at you like, like this. <laughs> and then you feel, and that will distract you. So you, because that might make you feel, oh, they don't like me. Don't. Yes, they do this. Okay. And that's it. So tell us when you're singing that song, right? It, you sang on my own this time, actually not from the musical. But did you, did you was there a moment where you felt, I got this? Or yes. did you, you were, there was like, as you were singing? Yes. The first few lines, I was nervous. So there was like shaking, my voice was shaking. And then I said, stop it, stop it, stop it. <laughs> I was telling him, stop it, stop doing that. You're only one chance. You want this, go for it. And so I was like, and I sang. And then when I went to the bridge and the, uh, as I, it went smooth and the belt went really nice until the end, like I felt being eponine and I felt good. And then after, when I, finished singing I felt good and they said can you stay for a while I said oh yes <laughs> oh they instantly like right away you know you didn't get that it's a brutal it's a brutal process so they told you to stay a while and they wanted to hear my phonetics how I speak how, if I can speak the language oh yes. and had you known that at the time had Sorry? you known that had you known that they were going to test you on your phonetics no, I, uh, I kind of, because I was like nosy looking at what, what other people were doing. <laughs> I saw the ones who didn't say just left. And I saw the ones that made it went to another room. So I go, okay, so I know something's going on there. So I was just being nosy. Like, What's the next step? <laughs> so I prepared myself that I know I was going to do Dutch language. Thing. <laughs> wow. And so what was that like? Well, they, they just gave you words and you said they yes. repeat these. Oh, wow. And so you just wanted to hear your phonetics if it's good. Amazing. And so thankfully, you could already speak three languages. By I'm, 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 yeah, I, I didn't have a hard time doing it. Thankfully, I'm so grateful for that. <laughs> okay, so you get into another room. They say yeah. stay for a while. Was their faces still like non emotion? Stay for a while. Well, this one is <laughs> this one's with a, 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 a language teacher. So she was like hearing and then they, she checks things. And said, okay. And then it's like, okay, stay for a while. Okay. Oh my God. <laughs> like, okay. Say again. And then the next one's dancing. Then we have to do <sighs> dancing. Yeah. So I, another thing, I'm not a real dancer. I did training, but like not professionally. But, and so I had to learn like American dream, uh, the steps over there. And and it was hard. It was hard because I had all the turns and I'm not, I was like turning like, <laughs> I want to make sure I get my spot and all of that. And it was like, I say, again, pr project. It's all about projection. You got to project yourself and show I can do this because you're competing with so many of you. So how are you going to stand out yourself? And I'm short. I'm 4'11". So I'm like, I'm coming out here. I'm not going to like be like that. So you really I put yourself out there. I love that. And I mean, that's so true in so many areas of our lives, isn't it? You're yeah. lovely. Says, I'm 4'11". How am I going to stand out? Well, I'm just going to project my energy. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And then, like, they're going to oh, notice me. <laughs> yeah, because there's some tall people like, do, do this fine, look nice. But now how are you going to do it? You're like, go more then. <laughs> like, that is so key. I mean, that's so inspiring to you because I think we there's so many times we enter a situation and we already put we stack ourselves against ourselves, right? We stack our thoughts against ourselves. But yes. from what, I mean, what you've painted that, again, this beautiful picture of every time that there was a something that could be against you, could be stacked against you, this beautiful tall lady yeah. who can do a pirouette like nothing, right? Yeah. Like, here you are, 4'11", I'm going to bust through this, right? <laughs> I'm going to do it anyway. Because like, you, you have to want it. That's why you have to push yourself. Because there's so many beautiful girls right next to me like you can get intimidated by that like oh, oh my god she's beautiful oh she's tall oh, she's got a beautiful voice but if you put that in your mind then you're never going to put yourself out there you need to take you need to show yourself absolutely 
I love mm-hmm. that. And um, so you you did the what happened after the dance? After the dance, they say stay a while. Again. Yeah, stay a while. It's all waiting. It's I hate the wait. I hated the waiting so much. And then they after and then they call names. Okay, they they took away people already. Like this, is what we're going from from three thousand to one thousand to five hundred, and yeah, because every audition they take out people already. And then Melanie, is this on. one day? Yes, one day. So the oh whole audition is like a whole day. <laughs> okay, so then you t- you get you pass that round, you pass that round. How oh, the me- the mental mind games that you that you have to oh, wow. jump through, right? It's the way. But I guess that's part of it. That's part of the discipline too. They want to see if, can, are you disciplined to, to how badly do you want this, right? Yes, exactly. So, so you go through that, and what's what's the next stages? How many more stages did you have to go through so until after, at the end? Yeah, go ahead. After the dance, and then we had to sing. I had to sing again. To, they want to see my range. So I, that time I think I was very, a soprano one. So I was younger, so I could see, hit, hit the high notes, it was fine. And then, um, then, then they came down to 22 girls. And then we had to, I had to do training again for another four months before the, produ- for, before the producers came again. So we. So we, you're saying we had four months, but the twelve, you might not even get it at this time. Yes. No. Yeah. Oh my god. I was like, <laughs> I was like, I was, I was like, okay, I'm gonna just, I'm going, going for this. I went, I went this far. I'm gonna keep going. And so that. The so final, they to train you in Philippines still, or are you are you in the Netherlands right now? In the now? Philippines. In the Philippines. You're still in the Philippines. Yeah. And they train you like, okay, work on this stuff for four months. So you know the song inside out, and you're with people who you know they're not. Some of them are not going to get. Yes. In. Like not all of you are going to get in. Yeah, we became friends and all that, and we know we're competing against each other. And so the last day when they came back again, and that's where we sang again, and and we sang again one by one again, and then the dance again. Like it was doing back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And they kept telling. And then the final was like, it was six, eight hours again waiting. And the final time and the four girls come here, they put us in two different groups. And then I I was one of the ones with only four girls and the rest were there. And then I thought, I said, I think I got this. <laughs> and when and I, they told you? And yes, they, they said. They let us sing. But there was fun. They told us to sing, um, uh, Hey Jude, no, no, oh. no, no, yeah, just, just like fun. randomly. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> and then, okay, and then mind oh, games, I tell you. Yeah, it is. <laughs> We're playing with us, and then they said, "We're glad to let you know that this group is going to the Netherlands." And we all cried. First of all, we cried because like we were tired and <laughs> after all these months, and we're sad because the other group didn't make it. Yeah, and so what was that? And so you you were brought there. I want to for the other group there. I mean, there's a lot of oper- t- um, lessons I think to be learned in everything that you shared. I mean, there's so many great takeaways already. Uh, but one thing I do know is that some a lot of stu- students they audition for roles, and sometimes they have to audition several times. Um, for those twelve people that were in that room, you know, what did you talk to them, and how did yes. they feel? Did they were they was their mind like we're going to go for the next one, or oh, were, yeah. were they defeated, or how, what was that? What did you see? Um, what was surprising for you in that in that instance, being in that other room for those other people after they found out, no, you all came out? What kind of conversation did you have? Well, some were defeated, of course. Of course, they worked so hard. And then just to let say that, no, you didn't make it. But a lot of them like kept going because audition is, doesn't mean that you're you're terrible. It's just you didn't fit the picture. You didn't Absolutely. fit what they wanted. So just keep going. Audition is, I say, keep auditioning until you get used to it then you won't feel scared anymore. It, it like, it's like nothing to you. So I would uh, I would advise everybody who wants to audition, just keep auditioning. And if you don't get it, it doesn't mean you're bad. It's just, you just didn't fit the picture. But right, and another way. opportunity will come. Oh yeah. That's, that's the that's thing. True. If you don't keep trying, opportunities may, may show up and you might not see them. Yes. Right? And that's, that's, I think the key. And it's just, yeah. and it's so much about that mindset. Oh, um, yeah. It's just so fascinating. You know, Melanie, we we are, I just looked at the time and the time has flown by. And I have like still like 10 other questions. I told you I was I have more questions than I than we have time to. But we do have our Zoom session. But I do want to um 
uh, ask one final thing, though, for people who may be interested in auditioning, um, you know, thinking about whether or not they want to be take on this role. What's one advice um, that you would give to somebody that you wish somebody had given you about life in musical theater, professional uh, being on the stage? What's one piece of advice that you wish you knew? Never give up. Keep learning and sell yourself know what you can do because you can do it and it doesn't mean you don't get this there's always other opportunities and grab every opportunity that comes to you absolutely i love that because if you don't if you're not going to cheer for yourself yes right <laughs> you're, you're your cheer, you, you have to cheer for yourself nobody else can thank you so much uh, uh, one final thing uh, what exciting projects are you working on right now that we can all look forward to in the future well, I just finished an audio book in Dutch. <laughs> I never thought I, I never thought I would do an audio book in Dutch, but the author liked me and I'm now in the second book. And I'm looking forward to doing more singing projects, hopefully soon. I love that. Thank you so, so much. I just wanted to, uh, there's some people here that I want to just give some shout outs to. Jessica Gage here says, Melanie, you're a talented woman. Definitely. I Absolutely. Alex Caprito. Hello. Woman of many talents. Outstanding. Jenny Mack, you're so funny. That's your sister. <laughs> 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 and hi, JD D Dizon, uh, your charisma uh, probably added to your selection. I couldn't agree more. Absolutely. Uh, Melanie, your energy, your charisma, your stories. Thank you so much for sharing your experiences with us today. I feel like we could continue, uh, but you know, we still have part two of this interview coming up. I loved hearing your stories and getting to know you. And thank you to all of you who have been tuning in right now or catching the replay. I hope this has been inspiring for you as well. To all my Singers Connect members, we will see you for our bonus call with Melanie. So you can go ahead and jump on Zoom right now. We'll meet you there in a couple seconds. Now, if you enjoyed this interview, be sure to like and subscribe to our Online Vocal Academy YouTube channel. And do join us inside our program if you're interested. You can check out all the details and learn some of our singing secrets at 3 singingsecrets.com. Thank you so much, Melanie. This has Thank been a joy. Thank you, Crystal. Thank you. Appreciate I hope that we can do this again soon, one day. I'll bring you I on again. Yeah, thank yeah you so absolutely. Thank you all for tuning in. I will see you again next month for another live conversation about music, passion, creativity. Until then, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.